Get your medieval geek on with Shadowversity t-shirts. Available through Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk a little bit about classical era swords. So we're going to be looking at uh, bronze style swords, but also what other materials that they could have been made in, and also the, the strengths and the sizes that they most commonly came in, but also the uncommon sizes as well. Because uh, that last bit, what were the sizes, standard sizes, and the possible sizes that we know of as well for these classical era swords, that is actually seems to be a bit misunderstood in the sword enthusiast community. And I've been prompted to make this video in response to a recent video that Matt Easton has made over on the YouTube channel Scholar Gladiatoria. His video is a historical analysis on the sword from the movie Wonder Woman. And if you know anything about me, you know this is the type of stuff I love. Taking a look at how fantasy interprets historical things and pointing out when it could have been done better or more realistic. If you're interested in seeing one of my own takes of this style of video, why don't you take a look at my realism and practicality review of the swords from the World of Warcraft movie. So clearly, I love this stuff. And in regards to Matt's analysis overall, that's not really what I'm actually going to be talking about in this video. It's just one or two comments in regards to the classical type of the swords that he compares with the Wonder Woman sword. Because Wonder Woman, Greek, you know, there's the connection there. And there's obviously, that's the inspiration for that sword. So yes, those are the comments I want to address in this video, and in regards to Matt's overall analysis of the Wonder Woman sword, is it's brilliant, 100% agree. And if you'd like to learn what the more historical and also just more functional design changes that uh, could be made on the Wonder Woman sword, go watch Matt's video. And if you're not too familiar with practical, functional, and also historical sword design, you'll learn a thing or two from his video as well. Matt is a wealth of knowledge on his subjects, and in regards to the comments that I want to address, uh, it's kind of a, a half and half. On one side of the comments are uh, correct, but uh, left by themselves leads to uh, some incorrect assumptions. So to achieve, or Matt's favorite word, context, I really feel a little bit more information needs to be said in regards to one of his statements. And there's another uh, part, another statement that is made that I do disagree with, and I want to share with you why. Now what about the actual physical characteristics of the sword? Well, fundamentally it's a short sword, but it's not that short. It's certainly a lot bigger than most ancient Greek or, you know, for example, um, hoplite Spartan swords would be. It looks to me to be about 50% larger. So this is the statement that I feel left by itself can lead to some incorrect assumptions. And the assumption would be that ancient Greek swords were not as big as Wonder Woman's sword, or that they came in any sizes bigger. Now Matt does not say explicitly that uh, swords didn't come in Wonder Woman's size. In fact, what he says, it's bigger than most Greek, and then he kind of clarifies that even a bit further, you know, hoplite Spartan swords, and most, so, so he is obvious by that statement, is saying that there are some swords that came in that size as well. And that is absolutely true, and that's the point that I want to emphasize here, that there's actually a lot of archaeological evidence, as in surviving Bronze Age swords, that were definitely the length of the Wonder Woman sword, and some even bigger. How big could swords get from this period? Well, the biggest sword that I have ever found in my own personal research that comes from the classical period, and uh, specifically 600 BC, is a sword called the Vered Jericho Sword. It's an amazing sword. In fact, I've made a whole video on this sword because it's so incredible. I really do encourage you to watch this video because it is one of the earliest steel swords we have ever archaeologically found. And just in doing additional research since making this video, I found perhaps one or even two more cases of steel swords being made as early or even earlier than this period. So this is phenomenal information, really important for sword enthusiasts. When was the first sword, steel sword? ever made. So please, yeah, watch the video, I cover it all there. But the other phenomenal thing uh, and precedent this sword establishes is the possible sizes that these swords of classical period came in. Now in terms, geographical location obviously has an important role to play here because uh, if it was from the classical period, where? And there could be a difference between the sizes of swords from, say, in Greece and the Middle East, because the Jericho, sorry, the Jericho sword comes from the Middle East. It was found in Jericho. 
so Israel territory of 600 BC because it becomes they they got conquered you know around that period as well and then there was only Jerusalem left so there's some context in this uh, description but just in regards to how big did swords get from this period the very Jericho sword is 1.04 meters 104 centimeters that is massive for this period easily as big even a bit longer than some standard medieval arming swords and the blade length actually matches some of the blade lengths of two-handed long swords from the medieval period so this is a huge sword and it comes from 600 BC so in regards to how big could swords get in regards to uh, the classical period and comparing the Wonder Woman swords not only could they become as long as the Wonder Woman sword they also could come in much much longer all right, now to the next statement that I want to talk about in Matt's video. It was very rare to find swords in antiquity that were this large because the materials that they were working with were generally speaking until the, the late or mid or late Roman era were probably not reliable enough or trusted enough to be made into very large blades. So I will address the first part of Matt's statement that it was very rare to find swords of this length, okay? And then he goes on to uh, some other statements that I'll address in a second. The question is how rare? Because when I look up, uh, you know, classical style, even Greek, you know, bronze swords, it's not too hard to find uh, surviving, you know, swords of the length of Wonder Woman's. And if it's not too hard to find surviving examples, it makes me think maybe it's not as rare as what is being implied by this statement. But if rare simply means less common than the most common type of sword, which is like the shorter swords, because clearly it does really seem, uh, that from what I can infer, looking at these surviving swords, there are there's a larger number of the shorter uh, bronze and Greek style swords than the ones that seem to match the length of Wonder Woman's sword. So so in that context you could say they are more rare but when you say the word rare it generally uh, implies that they're hard to find when uh, looking at the his historical evidence doesn't seem hard to find. Now to the next statement and it's this one that I really must take the most issue with and it's the statement where he says that the material that these swords were made out of were probably not reliable enough to make the swords into very large blades. Now it does depend on what he means by very large blades. Uh, I would consider very large blades to be a long sword length and I've never found a sword of the this period to match the standard length of long sword blades but the very Jericho sword as we mentioned matches some of the the matches the length of the shorter end of long sword blades and I, in my opinion that is very large but in the context of how Matt is saying it I think he's actually referring to the Wonder Woman sword as the very large blade and it wasn't common uh, and it was the materials that made it more difficult to make swords of the one of, of the length of Wonder Woman sword but if that was the case then why were bronze swords made of that same length, easily the same length as Wonder Woman's swords, and uh, in some cases even longer. Clearly bronze is not the perfect material to make a sword out of. S iron, if work hardened, can produce a pr uh, superior sword and steel blows them all out of the water. But notice what I said there, iron when work hardened. Iron can actually be a very soft material uh, and if it's not made properly will render a pretty inferior sword. That's why you find a lot of bronze swords in existence at the same time as iron swords. Bronze can be amazing stuff. The, the, the How it needs to be done though because bronze just by itself can be also quite soft and not very good for a sword and in that way it, they wouldn't be how to support a large sword in this in a sense. If the bronze sword is work hardened, which means they hammer and compress the bronze, uh, increasing the strength and hardness, and they did do it specifically on the edge, that can render a very strong edge for a sword. A great you know, example is actually a test done by one of our good friends, a fellow YouTuber in our sword, you know, weapons and armor community, Thane Thrand. He got sent a uh, very accurately made bronze sword. Now the size isn't as long as Wonder Woman's sword or even the larger ones but that's not what we're looking at his test for to get in a, a reference point we're looking at how strong the edge is and check out what he does he uses his bronze sword and cuts right through a sheet of mild steel now
Now, you might think that's impressive or unimpressive depending on what, I guess, perspective you're looking at this test because it's mild steel and it's very, very thin. What's amazing about this is uh, Thrand is comparing this to a, a famous and very publicized uh, test shown of how great the katana is. A katana challenge, right? And they get this katana and it chops through a sheet of thin steel. And everyone's like, that's amazing! Look how sharp the katana is! And it's actually not that impressive. Uh, a butcher's knife can do it. Bronze swords can do it. Now, it's still impressive in a sense, especially with bronze, because bronze is always considered to be softer than steel. Well, it also depends on what type of steel. Mild steel? No, I yeah, like bronze, yeah, actually. And uh, look at the damage. Nothing. So with proper work hardening on the edges, bronze can be really, really effective. But the uh, sophisticated engineering in these, you know, period swords, the classical period, it doesn't end there. Have a look at some of the, the ridges of these swords. See how they have this prominent, rounded, central ridge? These ridges have been added to increase the sword's rigidity, so to avoid bending, the whole issue you would have in making a bronze sword of a significant length. Now, of course, any sword will bend when put under enough stress. Same with these bronze swords that are properly work-hardened and have high ridges, but only after far more stress than people really assume. And clearly, this type of design and engineering was capable of producing a sword that was completely functional even when being of a significant length or longer than the standard average length of sword of this period. Easily as long as Wonder Woman's sword, and in cases, in rare cases, clearly we've only found one example of this, much, much, much longer example, the Vera Jericho sword. Blade length of around 90 centimeters. Same principles, work hard and edges, ri high ridge. And of course, this one is actually made out of mild steel, which is a huge uh, technological leap forward for the period it was made in, like incredible. So this is why the materials these swords were made out of, uh, from just even, you know, the lower ends of steel, some of the earliest, you know, productions of steel that were used in swords, to iron and even bronze, were absolutely reliable enough to make longer swords out of. And I feel the proof of this is the surviving archaeological swords we have of of this length and even longer. They wouldn't have been made of that length if they weren't at least functional to a certain degree. And there you go. So, classical era swords, yes, most of them fairly small, but there was a heck of a lot of them that were easily as long as the Wonder Woman sword, so we're, you know, we're looking about this length, and some even longer. I love having these types of discussions because it just increases everyone's knowledge all around. And of course, I love Matt Easton's content. I've learned heaps from him. So, and if you haven't watched his video about the Wonder Woman sword, it's, it's superb, okay? Apart from just those few statements that I wanted to address, everything else is brilliant. And the changes he wants to make on those swords, completely agree with. It's absolutely worth a watch. And his channel is absolutely worth subscribing to. If you have any interest in swords at all, you're going to learn heaps from this man. I really appreciate you watching this video. I hope to see you again. And until that time, farewell.